This lesson is looking at energy in ecosystems, so we're specifically looking at our sequence and explain the transfer and transformation of solar energy dot point. So regardless of the location of life, be it in the deep dark ocean or in hot geothermal springs, all organisms need a source of energy. Ecosystems are linking in networks of nutrient and energy flow and exchange, and almost all the energy that organisms on Earth rely on is derived from the sun, and photosynthetic organisms can capture that light energy and make organic compounds uh, to be used as energy. So the only exception to this are chemosynthetic organisms, which make these organic compounds from chemicals available in the environment. But these are pretty rare, and they're usually found in the depths of the ocean uh, where no sunlight can actually penetrate. So at its essence, light and heat energy are emitted by the sun, and light energy is captured by photosynthetic organisms like plants and algae, and is converted into chemical potential energy. So the heat energy is going to warm the planet and therefore allow the geochemical processes of Earth to take place, like the tides, the ocean currents, and the weather systems, and things like that. Now, organic compounds are the building blocks of life and all contain carbon and hydrogen. So these include carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. Anything that does not contain both carbon and hydrogen is considered to be inorganic. So we're talking things like water, carbon dioxide, nitrogen compounds, whatever else it is. Now, organic compounds like glucose, which is a carbohydrate, contain really high energy bonds. So when photosynthetic organisms capture light energy, uh, they convert this energy into chemical energy, which is essentially the energy stored in these bonds. Um, we access this energy by breaking down the bonds, um, basically releasing it, and then turning it into a usable form of energy uh, for us. So in our case, it's ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate, uh, and that occurs during cellular respiration. Now, photosynthesis and cellular respiration are complementary processes. They're reversed products and reactants, but they're actually different biochemical pathways. So they're not truly a reverse reaction that some people uh, tell you it is. So photosynthesis is a process of carbon fixing, meaning we're taking inorganic carbon and incorporating it into organic molecules. Autotrophs are organisms which fix this carbon, right? And they're converting the light energy from the sun to chemical potential energy in the bonds of glucose. So strictly speaking, um, there are photoautotrophs and chemoautotrophs. Uh, the latter are the feeding themselves using chemicals available rather than the light, but our main focus here is photoautotrophs. So these autotrophs are also known as producers, uh, and they are the main source of biomass in our food chain. So when we're talking biomass, it's the total mass of living matter in an ecosystem. All right, so essentially producers are creating biomass from sunlight with a few added ingredients, but not all the producers are created equal. The amount of biomass a producer has will depend on its photosynthetic efficiency. And efficiency will change depending on a lot of things. And it might be the light available, uh, the amount of light that it can actually absorb, as well as the temperature, the light intensity, and the type of organism it is. So for example, covering the same area of land with grass rather than with trees, there'd be less surface area of photosynthetic plant parts to absorb the light and photosynthesize, uh, and therefore grass would produce far less biomass. Heterotrophs, you know, they're other feeders or consumers. We're not really talking producers here at all. So all the animals and fungi are considered to be heterotrophs, which gain their organic compounds and therefore energy from other organisms. Okay, uh, And these organisms must be able to access the stored em energy in the chemical bonds by converting it to a form they can use, um, which is why cellular respiration must occur in cells to create ATP. Now, as energy cycles from producers to consumers, it plays a really small role in the carbon cycle, uh, which is a biogeochemical cycle. Um, and it is something that is going to cycle through. Producer organisms do that carbon fixing, right? They fix it into organic molecules, which is then released as a waste product once heterotrophs consume it and convert it to their unusable energy. So organic compounds will continue up a food chain into different feeding levels once consumers eat other organisms, which makes sense. So there we are, we're looking to sequence and explain the transfer and transformation. Remembering that transfer is occurring from, from say one organism to another as the form of chemical energy, but a transformation it means it's changing form. So if we're taking light energy and turning it into chemical energy because we can photosynthesize, that is a transformation.